So let's talk about Fluent API. Um, so the Fluent API right now we, we kind of wrote, let's look at our code. We've, we've gone in here and we've put in a few pieces of information inside the person to explain how the database should look using our entity framework code first. So I explained that a foreign key to status, so this is kind of bound together, right? And we have a person's status ID that works together with the person. So that's kind of how we made these guys work together. Now, that's pretty cool and awesome and simple to use as well, but it starts, if I get a lot of classes, a lot of entities, I'll have to look in them all to try and kind of map my database and understand my database. So if I wanted to figure out if my database was set up correctly like I wanted, I would have to kind of look in each of these classes just to get an overview of if everything was as I expected, right? Um, what if I don't want that? What if I only want to look at one place? Uh, well, they made something called the Fluent API that kind of takes out all these pieces of information that we usually put in the, under here, the foreign key, stuff like that. We can actually pull that out of the classes and make one big Fluent API explaining everything. Now, under the NC framework tutorial, which I love still, yeah, I'm in love with it. It's a really good tutorial. You have a lot of information here uh, about the Fluent API code first. And it's about how we make this model mapping and how we make many-to-many -many relation, one-to-many, stuff like that. And that's what I wanted to show you in this video. I want to show you how to make a one-to-many relation that we actually had inside um, the current setup. So let's have a look here. Right now we have one-to-many relation. If we look at the drawing, a person has sorry, a person has one person status that has many persons. So if we read this, we can say a person can have one person status, but a person status can belong to many persons, right? So that's how you have a one to many relation. Awesome. Now we want to build that inside the Fluent API instead of writing foreign keys inside our entities. Just understand there's nothing wrong with having foreign keys in the entities. That's perfectly fine. But I don't want it now. I want to remove it. And it's going to take a few videos to do that because I also want to get this out of the way. I don't want that anymore either. So let's start out by just removing the foreign key here from the person state. Uh, sorry, the person. Next, we'll go into the context and then we'll make something new in here. We're going to use a new class to build this Fluent API. And inside the configure one to many on the Fluent API in code first, you actually can scroll down and I'll grab an example here just to show you. You can have a method called onModelCreation. Now if you want to find that inside your code, you can go into your code and under your app context, right now my person app context, I can go in and I can say uh, override like this and I can say onModelCreation like this. And then I kind of get this method that he's referring to right here on the tutorial, uh, sorry, under NC Framework tutorial. Now I'll grab the one to many as it is. I'll just grab it now and explain it to you step by step. I'll paste it in here and now I'll start changing the code and try to explain to you how I read this code. Because another really cool thing about the Fluent API is, as I said earlier, you can kind of read your entire table in here. You can read your entire database inside this single model creation function right here. So let's start out by talking about the entity that I want to work with. Now, looking at the drawing again, I have to try and explain this diagram to you now. And I have to take a starting point. I have to pick where should I start describing this to you, right? And I want to start at the entity person inside my table. So that's why I'm starting out by saying model builder, start with the entity person. There we go. Now we know where we're starting. We are at this table right here. Now I want to explain to you this line right here. And it's a line that says a person has one person status that is required. If it was not required, it would say zero too many right? Because if it was not required, then we'd say like zero too many or something like that. Um, but it is required. So that's why I'm saying it needs at least one, right? So it's a required field. So it says it has a required person status, right? That's that line. And you can find that if you look inside the status property inside the person. So let's just say instead of um, the P is for person, right? So that's how I kind of explain the binding there. So now I explain this single line right here in the center. A person has a person status. So it's the line read from here to here with the one, okay? But I also have to read it back. I also have to read it from here to here. So I go back and I say, and it also has many, a person status has many persons, right? And let's instead of this say PS as person status has many persons. So now I've kind of read the line in both directions, right? Let's go back to the drawing. I say 
a person has one person status and a person status has many persons. So try and read it. A person has a required person status, which I can find with the status property, and it has many, a person status has many persons on the person's property. That's all I had to do to actually set up um, the many terrain relation using the Fluent API. Now we have to make some other changes in our code. I'll get back to those in the next lessons.